Shalom saints, greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We, it's a happy Sunday morning. We are still feasting on the book of Revelation because this is the time of the unfolding of the events in the book of Revelation. When John was told that these are things that must surely come to pass, we see the unfolding of that prophecy. He was at the Isle of Patmos, persecuted for the word of God, and he started seeing with his equal eye the unfolding of prophetic events. So the, there are eyes that have already seen the future the eyes that have seen the unfolding of scriptural events so we see that all the prophecies the beasts that were rising um the the church edges the patmos vision church edges the throne in chapter four and the mystery book or abstract titles of redemption in chapter five and now we are in the seven seals mystery so the sealed book the isaiah says in chapter 29 verse 11 the vision is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to him that is learned and say, read this, I pray thee. He says, I cannot because it is sealed. So, and the book is delivered to him that is not learned. He says, read this, I pray thee. He says, I cannot because I'm not learned. So the scholars and the unlearned were failing to pick the mystery because scriptural things are spiritually revealed. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it is the glory of kings to search out the matter. So he has made us kings and priests, so we'll search out the matters. Daniel was told to shut out these things, but they shall be revealed in the end times. So we see that it's a jigsaw puzzle. Precept must be upon precept, year a little, day a little. It's the connection of the scriptural ministries bringing out the pieces by pieces. We get the full picture of Christ in you, the hope of glory which is the principal theme of our lives. So every scripture connects with scripture to bring out the mystery of God, precept upon precept, line upon line. Yes, and we find the, the, that is the connecting of the things of God. So we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which was ordained before to our glory. So before the foundation of the world, God had a plan, and I has not seen and he has not heard Neither is it entered the hearts of men what God has prepared. But those things that are hidden, they are already revealed. The Spirit of God has revealed to us what the eye has not seen. It's a spirit of revelation. It's the unfolding of the mysteries of God. So to make all men uh, see what the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, created, um, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So God is now unfolding his plan. He says, unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. There is the you group and the them group. They are not given to know, but you are given to know. Secret things belong to the Lord, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever. So when God reveals a thing, he says to, to Abraham, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm going to do? He doesn't hide from his children. Surely the Lord does nothing, but he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So to us, it doesn't hide anything. He, he rejoiced in the spirit in Luke chapter 10. They're saying, I thank you, Father, because you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent, but they've revealed them to babes such as will learn. So blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they see. Many prophets and righteous men desired to see those things, but it was not their time. This is the hour that we are living in. So Joseph also in the mystery, he says, interpretation belongs to God. So the purpose of the opening of the seals was to call out a bride, to bring total restoration and to unfold the mysteries of the book of redemption, the abstract title deeds, and to expose the devil and his tactics to reveal Christ and to show our three, the threefold purpose of God to finish the mystery of God and to bring out the bride edge, to call out the names that are written in the book. So the prophet was seeing the unfolding of these mysteries uh, and the, as the mystery of God was unfolding. So we're going to just, as I'm about to open the word of prayer, just for an overview. The first seal, when the uh, when lamb opened the first seal, there was a beast. She was like a lion. He says, come and see. Because they were exposing whatever was happening. Up. These are throne cards. So there was a white horse in the first seal, which was deception. Many people thought it was Christ conquering and uh, with the power of the gospel shooting arrows of love but it was the antichrist spirit then the second seal was broken the beast like an ox says come and see exposing the tricks of the devil a red horse rider and at that time it was martyrdom and persecution of christianity 
from uh, Sminian Pekanian to Dark Edges when Christians were killed and 68 million Christians were killed. Then the, the, the third seal was opened and the man anointing says, come and see. And then there was a black horse rider. It was famine. It was in Dark Edges. The black was showing also the color of the Dark Edges. Christians were killed. Bibles were burned. But a measure of wheat for a penny. See that we had not the oil and the wine. The voice from the throne said so. Meaning that the Holy Ghost cannot be uh, stopped. The Holy Ghost ministry is unstoppable. Touch not my anointed ones. The oil and the wine, uh, we're going to pick it. Then he opens the fourth seal, which is the time that we're living in under the equal anointing. The equal anoint, uh, announces, come and see, exposing the tricks of the devil and the pale horse writer, which is the mixture of all other colors. Uh, it comes and death follow, hell follows that writer and the name of the writer is picked by the equal anointing to be death. He was killing with the beast of the, of the lands and uh, with the sword and with famine. Then we open the fifth seal. Then we see souls under the altar in heaven there. The Jews that were persecuted and killed. That was the, the, the martyrdom under fifth seal is different from that under the second seal. So they were crying, how long, Lord? Because they were under the covenant of tooth for tooth and revenge was still in their eyes. And for the testimony which they held, not the testimony of Christ. So they were given white robes. The mercy of God and the grace of God covered them. So the, as Christians, we get our white robes now. We, have a, we gave him our outer garment, but we, he gave us a robe of pure white. So they were unworthy and God gave them the garment. So the sixth seal, there's a great earthquake. The sun becomes dark as a... Uh, red is uh, the sun refuses to shine dark the moon becomes red as blood and there's a it's a total cataclysm this is the time of tribulation this is the time when nature is broken this is the time of uh, the foolish virgin patching being patched by the blood those who we have no holy spirit passing through tribulation this is the time also when men will cry for rocks uh, to fall on them those who don't have the rock of ages that is jesus christ and they will hide in the dens and this is the time of wrath this is the time of jacob's trouble this is the time of tribulation this is the time of shaking when everything shall be shaken so we find that um these seals i will read the scripture just to show the parallel of the olivet prophets because christ opened the seven seals in parallel on mount olives before i read the scripture let's open the word of prayer our Heavenly Father, as we get into these mysteries, into the revelation of this time, into this mystery of the seven seals, seeing the first six, six seals in Revelation chapter 6, may you open the eyes of our understanding, may you bless the reading, Father, and bless the study. May we absorb these things and realize that time is at hand. May it equip the believers to prepare for your soon coming. Come everything into your hands, in Jesus' name, Amen right we're going to show that when christ the disciples were asking him three questions what when shall these things be what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world so in the private uh time he goes with them private on mount olives i was privileged to go to mount olives to see this that wonderful place on mount olives he starts breaking the seal he says take heed that no man deceive you so the first seal is deception that is the white horse writer. For many shall come in my name, they shall say, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. Actually, this horse writer, people thought it was Christ, and it deceived many. And um, he says, you shall hear rumors of war, but in that be not shaken. For all these things must come to pass, but that's not the end. So wars and rumors of war. The martyrdom that happened under the red, red horse writer, that was the second seal. So he says, there shall be famines. Still, Matthew 24, on the acceleration of prophetic events leading to the end times, he says, there shall be famine, which is the Black Coast Rider, which is the uh, third seal. That then he says, now um, there shall be pestilences. That, that is the time of the equal anointing, the time that we are living in. That's why we see pestilences, all this COVID-19 and gem warfare, that is the time of the eco anointing. This is the time where we should launch with the wings of an eagle to a place prepared for us. She was given two wings of a great eagle to fly high. So we find that um, he says, you shall be hated for my name's sake. And many shall be offended, they shall betray one another. The, this was the Jews hated for the name of Christ, for, uh, for the gospel. That was the fifth seal, souls under the altar. The Jews were killed in the time of Hitler. They were massacred. They were 
they were, they were persecuted. So that was the fifth seal on Mount Olives. Then he says about the sixth seal, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall refuse to shine, it shall be darkened, the stars shall fall, and there shall be an uh, earthquake like never before. There shall be tribulation like it has never been seen. So that is the sixth seal opened on Mount Olives. That is there. Then on the seventh seal is quiet because even the, in heaven, there is silence in heaven when the seventh seal is opening. He says, the day is not known unto men. So, but in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, we shall be changed. That is the seventh seal. So, just to keep so that when I just go item by item, first seal, second seal, third seal, you can understand. Let's just revise quickly. The first seal, which was um, the white horse rider, it was the deception. It was not Christ shooting arrows of love, but it was deception. Uh, the white chose innocence, but the, the red was martyrdom when they were killing Christians. The black was famine. When at the time when they were charging for novenas and what death in the time that we're living in is, is the pelos right a spiritual death the fifth seal souls under the altar jews the sixth seal was the tribulation the seventh seal is the coming of the lord so if i happen to run through these things just understand simply that this is how things i will take them item by item so we'll go to the first seal um, when the lamb opened the first seal, there was the sound like a noise of thunder, one of the beasts, which is the lion anointing, saying, come and see. This, uh, expo the devil cannot just write in your life without an announcement from God saying, come and see, exposing the tricks of the devil in your life. So these seals, um, the book was like a scroll that had seals. It had um, seals like, I will show this scroll here. They will write and they will put seals. It then we'll be breaking, let's say, these seven seals that are around this book then to open the mystery inside. So when we have the mystery, the scroll unfolding, it reveals the mystery of what is inside. I got this from, from Turkey there when I remember that we are made kings and priests by God. So it reveals who we are. It reveals who the devil is. It reveals who God is. It explains the mystery of redemption and the plan of God, the upside title deeds, bringing redemption back to us. And what was lost by Adam comes back to us. So the first seal I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. That was the first seal, a noise of thunder, a voice saying, come and see. That was the lion-like creature saying, come and see exposing the works of the devil so the devil cannot just go unopposed in your life there's when the enemy comes like a flood the spirit of god raises a standard so these are the four beasts one like a man one like a uh, lion one like an ox one like a, a flying eagle so a thunder a loud clapping noise of thunder it means the voice of god nothing happens without a meaning that thunder, it means the voice of God speaking. So even in Job chapter 26, verse 14, it says, who can understand the thunder of his power? So God thunders with his mighty voice. We saw that in Revelation chapter 4, in the chapter of the throne, that out of the throne proceeded lightnings and voices and thunders. So God thundered marvelously with his voice and does great things which we cannot comprehend. So the thunder, even when Christ in the... Um, he, he, when he spoke they say, and said, Father, glorify my name, thy name. Some say it, it thundered. Some say it, uh, an angel spoke. So a, a loud clap of thunder, it is the voice of God speaking. So even there is coming in Revelation chapter 10, the seven mysterious thunders that will put the bride, bride in order for rapturing faith. So this is the, we come to what the prophet says about the first seed. He says, you are starting it and it opened in the morning. You was going to take a wrong. I was going to make a horrible mistake. You had read about people saying that the, it's Christ riding with purity of the word, shooting arrows of love and the white horse is Christ. But then God corrected him and he had read. It's good as a Christian to read the white and the, in depth. He read all the Nicaea fathers to Babylon's and um, these are the books that he read starting about the mystery, the revival of religion and um, 
through the library of books and um, the nun's testimony, all a collection of books looking for this mystery. Then we see the unfolding of the mystery when people thought this uh, white horse writer was Christ and he was bringing life and love, but that was deception. The, they were saying, uh, since he has a bow and an arrow, it's a victory. He's shooting arrows of love, taking it from Psalms 45, but no, that was not how it is. Even the prophet, is, it's a progression of revelation. When he preached the mighty Kongara, 1957, he took that scripture and says, it's Christ. He says, I'm opening Revelation chapter 6 there. I saw white horse and he says, that's Christ, the mighty Kongara. But God he has progressive re revelation. The peace says, come and see, exposing the deeper mystery of what God is doing in our time. So we find that this white horse writer is different from the white horse writer of Revelation chapter 19, which is Christ. This one is a deception and is crowned with a gold crown. Christ is also crowned by his saints with gold crown. And there's a vesture dipped in blood, followed by armies of heaven. And uh, we find that the revelation is that Christ is the Holy Spirit and is the same person. So he stands there. The lamb is opening the seals. So Christ is at the throne at that time. And Christ is a name, but the writer of this horse has no name. So Christ is a name. This person is a bow, but no arrows. He's a bluff. The devil is a bluff. But Christ has both lightning and thunder. He has a two-edged sword. So this writer is a bluff. He's a devil. is a hypocrite. So the white horse writer went out. Who is he? The mighty, the mighty conquer, conquering in his power. It, it was the Antichrist spirit. And the two spirits to be to, so close to, together is the devil in camouflage. It's the Antichrist. Nicolaitan. Nicol means to conquer. Light means the church. It's the Nicolaitan spirit that went forth as impersonation of Christianity and, de, de, and deception as a bluff. So the Antichrist uh, become incarnate. And his crown he was crowned at, at Nicaea there when the church and state got married. So that was the pagan spirit, uh, the devil finally becoming incarnate. So in the time of Constantine, they, he came into this religion and through the deceptions of the Catholic Church, they, to, it became a white horse writer. He was never interested in Christianity. But, but you wanted to bring pagan ancestors, the Nicolaitan, yet to be rooted and grounded into Rome. And they, they, that, that was how they came in and state and church became married. Then we find the triple crown. He was crowned with a triple crown, Vicar of Heaven and Pakitari and Earth, which is a power over politics, religion, and demon powers. This is the crown that they have, these three stages. First, it was Antichrist. Second, it was called False Prophet. Third, it was now called the Beast. That is the same Antichrist spirit taking stages. It starts as nothing uh, but deception, harming nothing. But then it changes to start killing Christians in the Red Wars. Remember the different horses, the writer is the same. It's the Antichrist spirit in different stages. As, jo as uh, James shows that there are four stages of death. So the writer is Satan Superman incarnate devil is an educated genius so you notice that the Nikau wanted to be smarter smart, smarter yet to reason it out like in Eden the, the same spirit of the devil slick and uh, it's a denominational horse conquering the world through denominationalism so this white horse writer uh, who is it it is Satan Superman um, it started as a spirit it was not harming anything it was innocent. There are things that the devil brings in your life, white, as if it's harmless, but later it's, it destroys you. Remember about the time when Christ came to the throne, that's when Judas came in. About the time when Christ left the earth, that's when Judas left the earth. About the same time that the Holy Ghost came, that's when the Antichrist spirit also came. John says the spirit of the, the Antichrist is already in the world, so you must test every spirit. So this white horse writer has been in the land all the time. He is the Antichrist. First, he is the devil to begin with. The spirit of the devil. He becomes false prophet, teacher of false doctrine. The next thing, he becomes the very devil incarnate. So even the Paul, Paul says there that the man of sin will come. That is the writer of this horse. That 
uh, who, who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. The devil does miracles and deceives the goodness of unrighteousness in them that perish. But to us who are saved, you cannot be deceived. The elect cannot be deceived. Whatever happens in this world, the elect cannot be deceived. So the devil comes with lying wonders. The, where there is the truth, there is also the false. When there is a true dollar, there is also a bogus dollar. So we find him doing, even in Revelation chapter um, 19, the false prophets that wrote miracles before them that are deceived. So it will take a scripturally trained church to discern the evil from the, from, from the right. So this is the false prophet. We will get into that when we get to the other chapters. The mystery of iniquity is already at work. The, the, the deceivers, you see, they are deceiving and being deceived. The man of sin is being revealed in this time that we are living in. And because the, God says they will have strong delusion. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness, God gave them over to strong delusion. Because they could not, they, that they will believe a lie and will be damned by it. There are some people who are so deceived that they believe that they, they are doing the right thing. The Bible says... If women and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It's happening in the pulpit. The devil has invented pulpits through the White House writer because he shall destroy wonderfully. The Bible says he shall destroy by peace. He comes as a White House writer and a king understanding dark sentences. He's going to kill later. He's going to be a black horse later. He's going to be a pale horse later. But he comes in by peace. And it destroys by peace. As they say, peace and safety, certain destruction comes. So God gave them over to reprobate mind because they could not retain the knowledge of the truth. So this white horse writer, it's a false light. It's deception coming into the world as it was in the Garden of Eden when it was deception. It looked like it's correct. It connotes some percentage of the truth is the trail of the serpent. So even Paul tells the church that I'm jealous over you with godly jealous, for I've exposed you to one husband. So as the devil beguiled Eve, he may beguile you. I fear lest at any minute that, that the devil, serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, you, you corrupt your mind from the simplicity of Christ. That is deception. Now what I like about the Bible and the reality is we see the unfolding of these mysteries. Someone said, it was Smith Wickles who had said that about the Bible, that the, it is supernatural in origin, eternal in duration, inexpressible in valor, infinite in scope, regenerative in power, infallible in authority, universal in interest, personal in application, inspired in totality. Now, Christ is the word, is the mighty conqueror, is above all these other conquerors. So Christ his love is unquestionable. His power is unconquerable. His impact is unmistakable. His meaning is undeniable. His mystery is inexpiable. His sacrifice is incomparable. His price is unimaginable. His death is immeasurable. His depth, his absence is unthinkable. We can't do without him. So let's go to the second seal. When he opened the second seal, we saw the red horse rider, which was martyrdom. Christians were killed. One by one, they chose to die like a great angelic choir singing. I can almost hear their voices sing, I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. They were giving their everything for a better resurrection. So this great hour that we are living in now, we see yearly is getting darker and darker, but the coming of the Lord is getting brighter and brighter as the Lord is revealing himself in this hour. So when the slain risen lamb, a lamb as it was slain, slain risen lamb, which is Christ, when you open this seal, which is the second seal, red was lighter, uh, the cow flies like beast. You see red also, because when the enemy comes like a flood, the spirit of God raises a standard, says, come and see to show the mystery. So the calf anointing, when they were being killed, it had to give them as a burden, bearer beast, they had to carry the burden. God releases an anointing appropriate for you to meet the challenge that you are facing. So here's the revelation, it's the devil again. So you see the trumpet pertain to civil war, 
but now the sword that this man has is a, it pertains to the church. It's a political war. There was a disturbance. The council was held and the bishop was elected. Then this horse rider jumped from the white horse rider. He dropped his bow and the white horse and went to the red one, started killing Christians. If you didn't agree with the Catholic Church, you were being killed. This is the way, even according to my, my terrorology, uh, the 68 million Protestants were killed. There's actually torture museums. Actually, according to Pope Alexander III, he labeled all those who read the Bible as heretics, all those who didn't believe in Catholicism, their properties was expropriated and they were, they were persecuted. Then the next one was uh, Pope Innocent III. He was not innocent. He instituted the Inquisition and launched crusades and he was killing everyone who was opposed to Catholicism. And Christians were, were dispossessed of their properties and they were killed. They were standing for the gospel. Um, then the Pope Gregory the, ter the Ninth, he also rose with the fierce criticism, criti cri um, a destruction of Christians. Pope Innocent the Fourth, he also rose saying that authorizing torture and Christians were burned at stake because he, he said burn everyone who, who is opposed to Catholicism. He says everyone who, who doesn't believe in Catholicism it was heresy. So, looking at this uh, Skumaka uh, in glorious reform, even Catholic itself, they admit that the, this woman there of Revelation chapter 17 is actually meaning the Catholic Church, according to what the prophet is saying there in the facts of our faith. There is one of their priests and writers admitting that this could be Catholic. So it's good to read wide and understand what you are facing, what the mysteries of our time. So there were, this was the torture museum uh, in, in San Mario. The, uh, the, this man was given a sword. The writer of the um, Red Horse writer, the Red Horse writer was given a, a, a sword and he was shedding blood. Uh, I won't show too much of this because it's horror the torture instruments and the, the things that will pierce a person and they bleed to death uh, the, in their torture chamber there. But the Bible had said, he who kills with a sword will die with the sword. So when Christ comes, he's going to slay the beast with the sword that comes out of his mouth. So that he that dies with the, who kills with the sword will die with the sword. So the devil is going to get it against him because this Red Horse Rider is the Jezebel Church, which is Catholicism and denominationalism combined because Jezebel and her children, I will kill her children with death. So I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the martyrs of Christ. So when you see what happens in Pecamos when they were killing Christians there, what happened even in Smyrna when Christians in Pecamos they were fed to lions and they chose to stand, they have not denied the name of Christ. Um, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the children of God than enjoy pleasures of sin for a season. And the, even in the time of Polycarp, in Smyrna, in all those ages, they were burned at stake for the word of God. Christians were persecuted because this beast was drunk with the blood of the martyrs, but he who kills with the sword will die with the sword. So one of the heads of the beast had to be cut also. It received a deadly wound and it died with the sword. So we find that that beast, that is the woman Jezebel, that is the awe of the Bible, the hallowed, because it's not true to the word of God. So it also means combined with the Catholics, Catholics and Protestants, everyone, any church that is untrue to the word of God is part of this system that drifts away from the word of God. So anyone who disagreed with the Roman, Roman Catholic Church was put to death. Even Joan of Arc was burned at stake for just being a Christian. So like the spirit of Atalia who, who started killing the royal seed, the devil was after everyone who has the Holy Spirit, everyone who is standing for the truth. So that's why we are against organized religion. We stand for the true word of God. So we find that Christians in that time of persecution, they had to have underground tunnels where they will hide and praise God away from the enemy, away from persecution. This was a war of seeds. The serpent seed persecuting the seed of the woman, which is the true church. Now we'll go to the third seal.
which is the black horse rider. As I said, that the color of the horse, black, also means this is the time of the dark ages. Christians were persecuted, and the rider is a pair of balances, a measure of weight for a, pan, for a penny. Let's see what it means. When he opened the third seal, the beast like a man says, come and see. I heard in the midst of the four beasts saying, a measure of wheat for a penny, and see that you had not the oil and the wine. So here it is, the revelation of it supernaturally revealed. The black horse rider started riding in the time of the dark ages. The dark horse represented the dark ages when Christians were were massacred, practically all hope had been taken away from the church and this pharaoh controlled both the church and the state that was the time of the black horse and a pair of balances, a measure of it for a penny, they were charging for novenas, for taking people from purgatory. this is the time of spiritual famine the church was facing famine in this time and um, the, the catholic church had amassed all wealth and all riches by gathering all the monies from the poor and from the rich and they would uh, pay for indulgences uh, until the rich people would pay for their sins in advance paying for taking people out of purgatory novenas and things like that now let's look at the black horse representing famine because the bible says in jeremiah 14 the word of the lord came to jeremiah concerning death which is famine Judah mourneth, and the gates there of a language, they are black unto the ground. And the cry, you see, famine is represented as black. So, you, they are black unto the ground. You find also in Leviticus 26, famine represented by, uh, by scarcity there. It says, when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver your bread by weight. So they were now weighing the, the, the weight, the bread. So the Catholic, it was money gospel, they were charging for the word of God. In Ezekiel 4 verse 16, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, behold, I will break the stuff of the bread in Jerusalem. They shall eat bread by weight, and they shall drink water with measure. So you see, a measure of wheat for a pen, it means... A day's wedge was now just to get bread only. That was the time of famine. Look at even the coins of that time. Uh, 70 CE, they have uh, scales there. Me that is the measuring. 80 CE, the coins have those scales. Uh, 90 CE, the coins have those scales. Uh, 108 CE, the coins have those scales. 123 uh, CE, the coins have that scale again. 161 to 180. The, so this measure of wheat for a penny, this scale that this person was carrying, was representing the, the power of the church. They were charging monies. And the most powerful institution in the Middle Ages, it was the Catholic Church. It filled political leadership position and it gained vast amount of land and wealth. Well, if citizens could not pay their taxes in coinage, they were allowed to pay uh, in equivalent of wheat and barley. The prices of wheat and barley were exact at the same time of um, Alexander there. Uh, the taxes increased, but this was going to cause a famine and the decline of the Roman kingdom. And uh, now, and he says, had not the oil and the wine. Remember in Zechariah, they were, the oil was feeding the candlesticks. That is the power. It's the Holy Spirit. The only Oil represents the Holy Spirit. In the church, you should not quench the anointing. Quench not the Spirit of God. There must always be the all-time Holy Spirit circulating in the individual life and in the life of every believer. So the oil and the wine. When that man who fell among the thieves and robbers on his way to Jericho, on the Jericho road, when the recovery plan was pouring all the oil and the wine and it was taken to the inn. So as a Christian, you must have the oil, which is the Holy Spirit, and the wine, which is the stimulation of revelation, which is the power of the revelation of Christ. So the oil um, is the anointing of God. So David was anointed. It meant not, not even a Goliath could stand before him. And the wine is the stimulation of revelation. 
when something has been revealed, it gives stimulation to a believer because it's pre presented by revelation. It's something that God said. It's a mystery. They cannot understand. After a while, it, God comes down and reveals it, and that is the stimulation. So during the time of this Black Horse right, that was counterfeit Christianity. Um, that was... Um, God also is a scale. You are weighed in the balances. Are you found wanting as a Christian? What is lacking in your life? The devil also is a scale, a false balance. So we find that the third seal, the Bible says, um, a black horse writer went forth. Uh, when he opened the third seal, the third beast said, come and see the black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hands. And a voice from heaven says, a measure of wheat for a penny, see that you had not the oil and the wine. So we have seen that in the Thyatira edge, dark edges, that's when that dark horse rider roared, when the masses and everything had to be paid for, prayers, novenas, that was the uh, black horse rider. But the Thyatirans were the cream of the crop. They stood against that deception. They stood against the evil systems of the Antichrist. And the, the seed, grain, fell into the ground and this rose again in the reformation up to restoration. So we find that Christ said, he that kills by the sword will die by the sword. So as the Roman Catholic Church in this time of the age he received a deadly wound, the, that was the fall of Rome. It fell as a pack and Rome, then it, the deadly wound was healed when it rose as papal Rome. This is the age when, but at that same time of the dark ages, God raised people like William Tyndale, who started publishing the word, translating the scriptures and spreading to the hungry souls. Because when the enemy comes like a flood, the spirit of God raises a standard. Now we'll go to the fourth seal. The rider is known as death and is riding a pale horse. And we know that this is a combination of all the colors. It's actually proved by the four things that he kills with. He kills with the with the death, with the beast of the air, with the sword, and with famine. The sword, the the sword is the red horse. Uh, the famine is the black one, and um, he's combining all forces. The devil in the last days combines all tricks, all health powers are combined to come against the believer. But God also combines all powers of heaven to come against the, the enemy. So when he opened the fourth seal, the eagle announces that come and see. This is the eagle edge. So it's the eagle anointing. So God counters every power of the enemy. When the enemy comes like a flood, in the days of the white, white horse rider, God released an, uh, a lion anointing. In the days of the um, red horse rider, God released an ox anointing. In the days of the Black horse writer, God released a man anointing to oppose. In the days of the pale horse writer, spiritual death, God raises an equal anointing. So the great deliverer rises against the great deceiver. We find that even the four stages of death, there were four tricks of Delilah. The fourth trick left Samson um, making his sport as almost nobody. So there are four stages of death. So the Antichrist is a master of deception. He played it in his stages, but he rose from the deadly wound that was by the sword. When he was defeated, when Rome fell, the Antichrist spirit rose. Now the dragon gave power to him to come as papal Rome. Like the devil being transformed to an angel of light, they now come with the light of the gospel. So this is the edge of the equal anointing and this is the age where the echo of this time, the prophet of the time, is say that there will be pandemics, there will be um, even oncoming storms and gem warfare. As we are seeing now, pestilences. He kills with pestilences, with the beast of the lands, and uh, with swords and with famine. The last age is an echo, the revealer of the truth. Before God goes into action, he sends the echo anointing to go before him. So that echo cherubim is in the land now, even when that woman, she was given two wings, the church, two wings of an eagle to fly away from the dragon to a place prepared for her. So we have an equal anointing, equal attitude. We have already seen future unfolding 
by the equal eyes of prophecy. So actually in Egypt during the uprising at that time, they actually camera in the news, the pale horse writing, the mysterious pale horse as you see there, that figure there, announcing that this is the time of the end. We see evidently in a global scale the pestilences, which is part of this pale horse rider. We see the Bible unfolding with the reality. So God, um, God only knows how many he caused to spiritual die. Imagine as the black horse, as the uh, red horse, he killed 68 millions. But as the pale horse, he has killed billions of people. Because in the natural, he killed 68 millions or, or more. But in the spiritual, he has killed even more than that. So it's a hybrid horse. That is a combination. Like it was in the days of Nebuchadnezzar, his end will come when the rock of ages will destroy. So the beast of Daniel there were a combination of the four empires to make one. So this horse also is a combination of the four other horses to make one when the devil comes with all his tricks to stand against the Christians. But God also raises a standard. The cherubims, the anointing that is raised at this time is a combination of the men, ox, um, calf, and equal anointing to come against the devil. So James had shown that um, death comes in four stages. The fourth right array is death. So look, as long as the intercessor is on the throne, Satan can stand there to accuse you because the atone is there. So there will come a time when the devil will be incarnate in, in, the, the, in this system and he will take over the world and he has a one world the, a order, new world order. So there will be the incarnate fullness of the devil bodily in a person as God is the incarnate fullness in us. So the Antichrist is on a pale horse which is mixed colors. Uh, we find that even there is a documentary, you go back to my message that I preached on these seals. I preached these seals last year, first seal, second seal, up to the last. So here I'm hitting highlights, go back to the message that I preached for each seal. You will see how Catholicism actually created Islam. That's why there's a similarity in their ways of worship and in their approaches and in their violence and destruction also. So the fourth stage, fourth horse rider, is death. The ego actually descends the name of the rider as death. It's spiritual death. In Laodicea here we see that people, they are increased with goods and need of nothing, but they are wretched, miserable. They are spiritually dead. It's the spiritual condition of the church. Some people are dead in the pews. They don't miss a service, but they are spiritually dead. So they are deluded and spiritually dead. Now remember, the Antichrist himself, being a man, he has a pride. He has his own church. And Christ also has his own pride. So when the enemy will come like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise a standard against the enemy. As we are preparing to close now, we will take the last two seals which is uh, um, after the first four seals, that's when there's the announcement of come and see. But after these seals, the church goes in the rapture. There is no more peace to announce come and see. The Holy Spirit will be done with the Jew, with Gentiles. It will be now operating with the Jews. So there, there's a blackout at that time. There's a time uh, of tough times and tribulation. So, the white horse mixed powers with red and what, then this is the pale horse of the last time. So, we find that um, the rider of the pale horse, hell is death and hell follows him. But the rider of the white horse of Revelation chapter 19 is Christ and is followed by armies of heaven. When you follow something, know what follows that thing. So, the pale horse rider, it was the power of the enemy, deception, and the destructive force of spiritual death. Now, I will just go to the next seal. It says um, about the fifth seal, when you open the fifth seal, there were souls under the altar that were crying, how long? 
So we say that those soils that were under the fifth seal, under the altar, slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. These were Jews. It doesn't say the testimony of Christ like Christians. So the testimony which they held. So they were saying, how long, Lord, true and um, holy, do you not judge and avenge? So Jews were under tooth for, uh, for tooth. They wanted to avenge, to revenge, but Christians, they forgive. So they were given robes. That is the fifth seal. Jews that were killed in the time of Hitler, in the time of those haters of the Jews. So God had to give them, through his sovereign grace, white robes. So they were in the sixth dimension under the altar there. Souls under the altar. So that, that's where those, though their bodies were in the graves, their souls were under the altar. Because when you die, you go to a waiting place where you wait for the resurrection. So by the grace of God, he gave them the white garments. You find that when the Jews were hated and they were mitered by sinful men like Eichmann and millions of them dying there, they were killed. They, they were given robes by God. Um, that is the grace of God that stooped to give them each robe like David did for his brethren. So they were killed and tortured, but God brought beauty for ashes, redeeming them and restoring them. In the time of Hitler, they were martyred, even real Jews down through there, who had their names in the book. Though they believed, they lived Judaism to the dot. They were martyred by Eggman, and honest millions of them in Germany were shot and killed and murdered. But then, when I went to Germany, I went to see the, uh, the, the museum of the museum where they were showing about the Jews that were killed. This is the place there. Even it's amazing to find Hitler saying that I, I, I'm now as before a Catholic and will always remain so. Hitler himself professing that he's a Catholic and. He's saying his move is Christian in origin. That this is deception at, at its height. So in the fifth seal, um, we find that it's the Jews that were killed. And they were martyred at that time. The fifth seal being opened, the church is already gone. And its souls under, it can't be the souls under the early church because the church is already gone. There's a controversy there. But remember, the church comes in, there was martyrdom of the Jews, and they were killed. They killed them till they had no more gas to kill them. They shot them till they had no more bullet to shoot them. They done everything. They cremated their bodies. That was the time of Revelation chapter 9, verse 17, that I saw horses in a vision. They that sat on them having breastplates of fire. That, those, that is... Uh, a brimstone and uh, this shows the gunpowder and the fire that they were using against the Jews. The heads were like lions and they, they issued fire and smoke and brimstone. That was the time of persecution, souls under the altar. But tribulation caused them to return. Sometimes the sufferings that we pass through as Christians cause us to remember where we came from and to return to God. So they've been blinded. God let them alone. Uh, so that his grace will open the for us the wild wild olive to be saved but when the time of the grace of god comes they are given white robes so as a christian we already have white robes the garment we are clothed in we are washed in the blood of the lamb washed whiter than the snow we lay aside the garments that are stained in sin so you see the jews we have to suffer. Uh, they were told that wait until the same number will be killed. They will be killed in the tribulation. The, we find in Revelation chapter 7, the angels are holding the winds so that there is no war of Amakiton until the Jews are sealed. So we find that beyond the curtain of time, there is a waiting place. There is a place where you wait for the final trumpet. So the last seal that we take today is the sixth seal. When you open the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And um, 
the sun refused to shine, the moon became as blood. All those elements are very important. Let's look at it scripturally, what it means. When he opened the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sacral of hair and the moon as blood. You know that um, there are things that will happen to the earth. That is tribulation. The earth is being shaken. Something will happen to the moon, which represents the church. It's becoming as blood. The foolish virgin, they are shedding their blood. And it says the stars of heaven, which represents the Jews, fell to the earth as a fig tree. Fig tree is a double representation there. Stars and fig tree is Jews. Casted it, untimely figs. Uh, when she is shaking of a mighty wind. The wind is a war. So we find that the Jews, the figs and the stars are also being shaken. There shall be the war of, uh, with Gog in Ezekiel 38, the war of Armageddon. Then heaven departed as a scroll, and um, every mountain and islands moved from their place. That's when now the whole plan of redemption lays under these seals. God is showing in his great wisdom that he is gathering a bride out of all the nations as a bucket of flowers of many colors. We shall make the bride of Christ. So when he opened the seal, the sun became black as sackcloth. And the moon became uh, like blood. The church is shedding blood. Foolish virgins, the bride is already gone. Stars fell into the sky. The Jews are actually being persecuted also at the end when the covenant with Rome is broken. So this is the sixth seal. It's tribulation. It's a total cataclysm. There is interruption of nature. It's because Moses and Elijah of Revelation chapter 11 are in the land. They are given power to smite the earth with all plagues. They can interrupt nature. They are, God will give power to those with witnesses. So in Matthew 24, when we look at the sixth seal, in Matthew 24, it says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened. The moon shall not give you a light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So just understand simply that the sixth seal is tribulation. That's the time when those who remained in the rapture will suffer for three and a half years. That's the time also when under the ministry of Moses and Elijah of Revelation chapter 11, the two witnesses, the two candlesticks, the two olive trees will give witness to the Jews, putting them back in their tribal order, preaching the same message that we had, the Holy Ghost gospel, back to the Jews again, bringing them to order again. We found out that nature took a tumble after, under the sixth seal. Look what taken place, the earthquake, the sun went black, the moon would not give its light. So my loving brother, when the world's on fire, would you like God's bosom to be your pillow? So let's not wait for that time. Let's make our reservations now. Let's apply the token now and be ready. So the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake. Similar language, you find it in Revelation 16, Isaiah 2, Joel 2, about that same earthquake that is coming. Could it be that same earthquake that will sink Los Angeles? Could it be that same earthquake? In Revelation chapter 8, verse 5, the angel took a censer and filled with um, intercessions ending there, threw it to the earth, and there were voices and lightnings and earthquake. In Revelation chapter 11, there was an earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. The earthquake, those who were slain were 7,000, and we find in Revelation 16, there were voices and thunders and lightning, and there was an earthquake such as was no, never seen since the earth was there. So there is an earthquake coming, and the heaven shall depart as a scroll. The hosts of the heavens shall be dissolved. Everything will pass away, but we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. The heavens will be rolled away. Uh, and it is the day of wrath, according to Zephaniah 1, and trouble and distress and destruction and desolation. That is the time when kings of the earth, seven classes of people made there, says great men, one, rich men, chief captains, mighty men, bond men, every free man, they hid themselves in the rock saying, uh, mountains fall on us. That is the time when he that is filthy is filthy still. You cannot repent at that time. You repent now and make right now. That is the time of trouble. But the Bible says, because you have kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from the hour of temptation that shall come upon the earth to try them that dwell on the face of the earth. So this is the sixth seal. I was running through all of them. 
so that you can understand but follow each message that I preached last year on first seal, second seal, third seal, fourth seal, fifth seal, sixth seal, and seventh seal separate so that you can understand. Here I was revising and running through all these things, but it gives you a scope to realize that time is gone. It's no time to play church. It's time to be ready. God is calling his people. God is gathering his elect with the sound of a trumpet. He's preparing us for the soon coming of the Lord. The rapture is at hand. So go through these things and understand them and we'll pick in the next uh, sermon about the seventh, uh, the, 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 the um, Revelation chapter seven. If you want a detailed account of the sixth seal, because I just hit highlights, I've not even finished, but time is gone. Go and see the message I preached on the sixth seal. I gave the detail of everything, of all the other seals. So follow them. If you have missed anything about the book of Revelation, follow it and be blessed. Let me pray as we close. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the unfolding of these prophecies and the message of the hour that has made this book an open book. The Bible has become a new book to us. Father, may you bless us like never before. May you answer all our desires, all our needs as we end this session. Bless your people, Lord Father, and answer all their desires. Heal the sick. Father, visit those who are still sinners and make them repent now, not at that time when it's too late. As we apply the token, remember our loved ones, remember our families. Bless all of us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So God bless you. We end our service here. Go slowly and understand these things. It's a lot of wealth of information. Here I was hitting highlights because I was taking six seals at once. But we're going to take Revelation chapter 7. It's going to be softer as we go. God bless you till we meet again. Amen.